Hello everybody, good morning. I hope your morning is going well. I'm out on the road still. I've been out on the road now for about a month and a lot of brokers, they don't get out on the road. They don't meet their drivers. They don't deal with their customers in person. They're, you know, cranking on the phone and stuff like that. And, you know, I like to do this and I'm fortunate that I can do it because not only do I own a brokerage and a freight forwarding company, I also own a pilot car company. You know, I broker freight, I broker pilot cars, you know, and I forward freight. I used to own trucks and it's just so hard finding good drivers that I had to sell that equipment and I can't drive anymore. Uh, I've got some medical conditions with diabetes that doesn't allow me to do that, all right? But I still like getting out on the road playing around. And if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna teach you some stuff about moving freight. Now this video, hopefully I can get it all done in about 10 minutes. It'll be available on our Instagram feed and also on our YouTube channel. Now, if you follow my YouTube channel or Instagram feed, you've seen where I've been kind of walking you through some oversized loads and heavy haul freight. I've primarily been showing you pictures of the equipment being loaded and what type of equipment it's going to run on. Now I'm gonna break it down on how to bid this freight because so many brokers out there don't have a clue. It's probably the number one question that I'm asked by the people that take my class for freight brokering is how do you bid heavy haul freight? Either that or project moves and government freight, and I cover all that. But we're gonna talk about heavy haul freight. So if you will pardon me, I'll get into it. You know, uh, as I said, I'm in Oak Grove, Missouri right now, right outside Kansas City. I'm gonna get me some Arthur Bryant's barbecue today. But here we go. Now, when you're bidding an oversized load or heavy haul freight, and they're not the same, all right? You could have oversized loads that are 105 inches wide that are running on a flatbed. That's just all it's gonna require is a permit. You know, it could be a $10 permit, but you have to factor in those costs when you're bidding your freight. Now, if it's a small oversized load, it's not really an encumbrance to the driver in any way. So your bids are pretty much going to be the same as a regular flatbed or step deck running that load because it's not gonna take up that much more fuel. It's not going to be, you know, take up that much more time to load and things like that. If it's one of these small oversized loads, you know, as many times as I tell the people that take my class, you know, do your homework on all your loads before you prepare your bid. A lot of them don't, they just jump and throw a number out there. Maybe they find a truck, maybe they don't, and they end up in trouble. And that's when they're on the phone calling me. You know, and I'm like, well, you should have did this. You should have did this. You know, I just literally had a guy who bit a load. He ran the load and basically he didn't know he had to have pilot cars. He lost about five grand on that load, you know, and basically the truck held the load hostage, you know, and it was uh, the fault of the broker and it was the fault of the truck because not all trucks know what they're doing when they're bidding this freight. Okay. But let's break it down. Okay, so you've got an oversized load that you're bidding, all right? Now I'm gonna use, for instance, a load that we just ran, and you'll see some videos of, of that load here on YouTube. All right, now this was a CAT 777. It's an off-road rock truck. Now we ran that up from Phoenix, Arizona to uh, Seattle, Washington, to the port. It took 10 days to run this load. But when you're running this freight and you're getting into the bid, you're gonna investigate everything that's going to be involved at it ahead of time. So you as a broker agent or you as a truck, they're gonna give you the dimensions and the weight of that piece. From those dimensions and the weight of that piece, you're gonna determine what trailer you're going to need. Now, this particular piece weighed about 145,000 pounds. It was 18 foot wide it was 16 foot tall, all right? Now, when you put all that together, what type of equipment are you gonna need to load this? Well, due to the fact I've been doing this a while, I know I'm gonna need a 13 axle, all right? And this particular trailer that ran this was an 80 ton Trail King. It was moved by Henderson Heavy Haul out of Grand Junction, Colorado, top notch company. You know, I deal with them all the time. And this was not my load that I bid, but I'm gonna tell you how to bid this load, all right? Now, with that, so you know the equipment you're going to need. Well, that equipment ain't cheap, all right? That 13 axle trailer 
you know, you're looking at these guys for this because of everything involved with permits, pilot cars, police. In some places, you might need power assistance where you got a bucket truck running with you to raise the lines. All those are fixed cost. And that's going to be over and above the price of the move for that truck. So when you're bidding this, it's going to be the truck rate plus, plus, or even plus, plus, plus. Now those pluses mean permits, pilot cars, police, power assistance. The more pluses that are added, the more money it's going to be. All right. Now, when you're talking to that truck as a broker or a broker agent and you're negotiating your rate, you have to understand most of these trucks that you're going to deal with, they got it in the back of their mind that you're a moron. All right. And it's because of everybody who came before you who doesn't know what the hell they're doing. You know, you got these guys that are working for brokerages as broker agents that are calling them, you know, if they see their uh, truck posted on a load board like Truck Stop or DAT, they'll give them a call and they'll say, you know, I got a Cat 336, it's 11 and a half wide, it's 12 tall, it weighs 89,000 pounds, it's going from here to here, point A to point B, and I'll pay you this much, okay? They're just, that's pretty much how they're going to spit that load out there to them. Well, they don't know what's going to be involved. They don't know, look at where that load's going and things of that nature. You have to take all those things into consideration before you're moving that freight and before you're offering a rate to that truck if you want to su successfully move this load without any problems. You know, when I'm moving freight, I don't want problems. I want to give it to a trucking company I know I can trust, okay? Here's the rate. I know what's going to be involved. Get it done. Get it delivered. You know, unlike a lot of brokers, I don't need you to call check me every morning at 9 a.m. I don't have one of those services. You know, a lot of my guys, you know, they run from sun up to sundown. And what they're going to do is just shoot me a text. And if I got issues, want to know where that truck is, I'll just call the owner of the company and they'll get in touch with the driver. You know, I'm not going to beat them to death like these little rookie brokers that are working broccoli coming out of Santa Maria, California. Hey, you got to tell me where you're at on Interstate 80 going across. I don't care. You know, as long as I am notified about the freight, I understand what it's going to take to move. Now, this particular load, this Cat 777, it was a super load because of the weight. All right. Now we were 125 foot long. We weighed 250,000 pounds. Now I'm going to break it down by state. In Arizona, where we loaded it at in Phoenix, we needed permits, pilot cars, and police. All right. This is day one of the move. All right. We loaded that. The, the cops wanted to make it a night move. All right. So we loaded it from about 7 to 10 o'clock in the morning. And then the cops met us at 10 o'clock at night. We had four state police. They're not cheap people. You know, you got to get these fixed prices involved. You got that permit. So you got to check that permit on what that permit cost is before you move it and before you submit your quote. All right. Now, so you got a permit cost involved. You got cops. Well, this had two pilot cars. This had a chase car. That's what I'm actually doing for one of my pilots out here on the road. Okay. And we had a pole car. Now this chase car is going to charge. I'll break down the charges. A dollar 65 cents a mile, 85 bucks for an overnight. And if they're not moving, that's called a no go. Okay. He, he's going to get 250 bucks a day plus his hotel, you know, whether he moves or not. All right. Now, if he moves under 300 miles, he's going to get a day rate of about 600 bucks. All right. Now that pole car, he's going to get anywhere from $1.85 a mile to $2 a mile. And the same thing with the no-goes and the overnights and things like that. His day rate's going to go up because pole cars are harder to find. All right. So those are fixed costs that you have to factor in when bidding that freight with your customer. You know, you as a truck, you're already, if you know what you're doing, and I'm sure the greater amount of you guys do, you already know those fixed costs, so you're putting that into effect. 
Well, we did that night route move. We go to the Nevada border, all right, on, uh, I believe it was 93, up there by the Hoover Dam, all right? Now, we got there on Friday morning, all right? So, we drove all night. It was only like 290 miles, eight-hour trip because of a lot of crawls. That truck, that Kenworth W990, is only getting like 1.8 miles to the gallon, all right? So, money, money, money. All right, but once we get there, we cannot travel in Nevada on the weekends, and a lot of states are like this. All right, so that means that truck's sitting all weekend, but more importantly, those pilot cars are sitting all weekend. So you got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right, so you figure two fifty a day, so that's seven fifty plus the hotels. So that's another thousand dollars for those pilot cars just for sitting, playing keno at the casino. All right. That's another fixed cost, all right? We met our Nevada cops, another four cops, all right, on Monday. You know, so they take us on this particular load up to uh, Tonopah, Nevada, only about 190 miles, all right? But that's where they could take us for that day. Then we're gonna meet four more cops the next day. They didn't take us all the way through the state. Now, we wouldn't have been able to make it through the state anyway, but that's where they said they could take us. And, you know, Nevada's all stretched out and it's mostly desert other than Vegas and a few other towns, you know, but that's where they could take us. And that's a good fueling point, you know, so those pilot cars got day rates because they went under 300 miles. All right, more cost, okay? Now, the permits, I don't know the cost of the permits. I did not run the cost of the permits for any of this, but you know, I'm trying to give you an idea of what's going to go into effect when you're bidding this freight. All right, so the next day they pick us up in Tonopah, which is got the highest concentration of serial killer clowns in the United States. Think about that. They're serial killer clowns, really. But yeah, there's a place called the Clown Motel there. It'll freak you out. All right, but so our cops meet us the next day in Tonopah. Now, at that point in time, they take us up to the Nevada, Oregon border, all right? And we're sitting outside an Indian reservation in the middle of nowhere because that's where you end up a lot. All right, now it was about 315 miles getting up there. All right, so the pilot cars didn't get a day rate today. They got paid by the mile. You know, we're done with cops. Oregon doesn't require cops, but you're still getting into Oregon there. You still got a lot of crawls. That truck, you know, basically, he ain't get a, getting a lot of good mileage there because of all these damn crawls through Oregon. All right, so we go through Oregon. Took us a couple of days to get through Oregon. And then we're up on the border of Oregon and Washington. Now, we sat at a scale. We got at the scale at like 9 o'clock in the morning. And we had a night move going into Seattle, about another 190 miles. All right? We sat at the scale all day. Now, the pilot cars are sitting there with that truck, all right? So they're getting a day rate just for sitting. It's not a no-go because they're on the load. We're waiting to meet the cops of a night. In Washington, we only had to have one cop, you know, which additional fixed cost, all right? And to run that thing into the port. So when they do that night move, not only did they get that day rate, they got another day rate for running at night. So those pilot cars made like 1200 bucks that day, all right, um, to take it and finish it at the Port of Seattle. Altogether, that run took 10 days. All right, now, if I was bidding a load like that, I'd be in it anywhere from 25 to $28 a mile because it's going to make money for that truck. It's going to cover those permits, cover those cops, you know, and I'm going to make some money on it as a broker. And I might even been entered at a little more, maybe even 30 bucks a mile, all right? And it was a 1,600 mile run. So this is a $50,000 move, all right? Because when that truck is looking at his freight that he's bidding, he's looking at where he's going. Now, when that 13 axle goes up there, all right, there ain't a lot of freight, big freight coming out of Seattle. So he's gonna have to deadhead somewhere else to get a load. Well, he's gonna factor all that in to his freight bid, all right? And you, as a pilot car, you have to think, I'm sorry, you as a broker, you have to think about that as well 
because that's going to affect the rate you're going to pay. It's just like when you're, you know, bidding reefer freight out of California, going up to Hunts Point in the Bronx. You know, he ain't going to get no freight that's worth a damn coming out, so he's going to charge more, you know, so he can pay himself to come out of there and get a good load, you know, going somewhere else. All right. But on this particular move, that truck had to deadhead to Gillette, Wyoming to get his next load. And that was like 1,200 miles. Well, whether you know it or not, in what you're paying him, if he's doing his job right, he's bidding that, and that's going into the freight rate, all right? So when you're bidding these oversized loads and heavy haul loads, primarily heavy haul and super loads, you have to take all that stuff into account, all right? Another thing is you're waiting on permits. Like this Washington permit, you know, a lot of brokers think, okay, I'm going to book it, and that truck's going to pick it up tomorrow. That's not necessarily true. That permit in Washington took three weeks, all right? The bigger the load, and if they do what's called, they designated a super load, you could be waiting three weeks to a month. And this load wasn't that big. You know, I've brokered loads that are 500,000 pounds, you know, that, that run on 30 axle trailers. You know, and you could be waiting four months because they're going to do route surveys and things of that nature. You know, everybody wants to broker oversized loads and heavy haul, but they don't know their equipment. They don't know what it should be loaded on. They don't know the fixed cost. You know, I've even had uh, my former students contact me and say, well, I'm going to handle the rigging. Now, the rigging are the cranes that are going to load that load. Those are more cost, which I you should totally stay away from. If you don't know anything about rigging, you'll lose your butt. I've seen guys lose twenty five, thirty thousand dollars on a load. Yes, they lost that. They had to pay that. All right, because they bid the rigging in with the job and they didn't have a clue. All right, protect yourself before you start bidding this freight. Know what you're doing. Have somebody mentor you that actually knows what they're doing. I myself, I've been moving freight for 25 years. I've moved over $50 million worth. You know, I'm not like a lot of these charlatans here on YouTube that say they're going to train you to move freight and they've not moved their first damn load. You know, I value relationships with my customer. I value relationships with my trucks even more because the trucks are the ones that are out there loading that load, that load I was telling you about in Gillette, Wyoming. That guy loaded that load in 35 below zero weather. He's out there for two hours chaining this load down. That'll make a man out of you now, all right? that That's the type of things that are involved when he's giving you that freight rate. When he's only getting 1.9 miles to the gallon, those are the things that are involved when he's giving you that freight rate. Those permits, those pilot cars, those cops, all, all those costs that are lining up, it's over and above. And the last thing, routing. You know, a lot of brokers, when they're given a truck, he's going to ask you for the mileage. You're running PC Miler or Rand McNally or whatever's on truck stop. It's going to say point A to point B, 863 miles. Well, when you're moving a load like this, all right, the state is going to give you the route. The trucking company will submit a route, but the state is going to give you a route. And it might end up being... 1700 miles because of the routing you know and the broker if he doesn't know what he's doing he's like what do you mean what do you mean you know it says right here right here know what you're doing learn correctly have somebody mentor you talk to your trucks now some trucks are going to bullshit you and because they don't know what they're doing well i'm going to need a pilot car here i'm going to need cops there and he's only 10 foot wide and you don't need any of that all right, so he's been moving oversized loads for about 15 minutes. All right, do your investigations. Learn to build the proper relationships. I'm sorry about the long video. It's about 20 minutes long. Hopefully, this is going to help you out. If you want to learn how to broker freight profitably, correctly, legally, contact me. Freightbrokertrainer.com. Freightbrokertrainer.com. Call my son, he's in the office while I'm gone, 888-854-6270, 888-854-6270. My name's Scott Woods, I'm the freight broker trainer. I own Transportation Training Group and Equipment Expeditors. I'll teach you how to become profitable in this business and you don't have to be like one of those new brokers that 
35% of the people that start brokerages are out of business in the first seven months. And they end up burning a trucking company because they can't pay their bills because they got shafted by a customer because they didn't know what they were doing. Everybody have a great day. Hopefully they got this ice cleared off the road. And uh, I'm going to go get some rib tips for me and uh, the driver. Man, there's an argument over good barbecue. And I eat it all over the country when I'm traveling. South Carolina's got good Q. So does you know, Alabama, depending on where you go. Texas has their own flavor. Memphis claims a title, and so does Kansas City. Well, I'm in Kansas City. I'm old school. I like Arthur Bryant's. Got to get me some rib tips. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you. FreightBrokerTrainer.com, 888-854-6270. Hopefully this uh, video helps you out. Subscribe to my channel, and I'm going to upload a bunch more in the next week. We'll see you.